welcome back to Shred Guitar in the 80s. Today I thought it'd be a fun day to look back at some of the LA guitar players again. Um, in particular, some of the phrasing ideas and no choices that the players of that era used. Um, guys like Warren Demartini, Jakey Lee, the amazing George Lynch, Eddie Van Halen, Randy Rhodes, all had a very distinct style, but there was something about the LA guitar sound that kind of drew them all together under one collective umbrella. Eddie Van Halen is definitely the father of the L.A. sound. Um, I mean, he invented his own style, was probably one of the greatest innovators that ever lived in the history of rock guitar, along with Jimi Hendrix. And he just had a really unique way of approaching the note choices that he used, and also his timing and phrasing. I consider Eddie's phrasing to be some of the best phrasing ever. I mean, the guy was a master of the beats, the way he would just play in the cracks. <laughs> Eddie would do phrases where he'd play the minor pentatonic but throw the major third in just in a really cool way. An example of this would be this. And what he's doing there is basically in D minor, you probably think of like D minor 7, kind of a Dorian sound, but he uses the major third and the minor third together. Which is just a really cool example. I think uh, Take Your Whiskey Home has that kind of thing. Another phrase that Eddie did a lot was this. That was his ending. Now, I've talked about this before. You can never have too many killer endings. And a lot of my endings were definitely learned from Eddie Van Halen. I thought his endings were really cool, the way he ended his phrases. Because he very rarely ended on the downbeat. So he goes up on 8, down on 8, on the 1st and 2nd string, and when he plays that 8, he hammers to 11 and pulls off to 8 again on the 2nd string. Then he plays 11 on the 3rd string with the downstroke, jumps up and hits 8 on the 1st, and then pulls off 11, 10 to 8 on the 3rd, then he plays 10 on the 3rd, back to 8 on the 2nd, back to 8 on the 3rd. So there's that lick. Just a great phrase. Another thing Eddie would do a lot is he would do the wide stretches, but he would phrase them like this. And what that phrase is slow is this. Another great phraser was George Lynch. He was just amazing. And that's a, just a perfect example of George's phrasing. Just awesome how he mixes up the notes, um, lands in the downbeat, lands in the cracks. I remember the first time I heard that song was on MTV. And I thought, wow, that's cool. You know, it was rock. I wanted rock. And, and that was cool, hard rock. And then when the guitar solo came in, it just blew my mind. The tone and his touch. I mean, George's touch is just amazing. And the way he'll play in the cracks of the beat like Eddie, but in a totally different way. I really can't say enough about George's playing. I am going to cover a lot more of George in the future. I think that solo from Breaking the Change is really just a perfect example of some of George's phrasing. The song's in E minor, and he plays it over the riff. <laughs> killer riff and he starts out with that and that little it's just a great example of George's playing that little rhythmic thing there he lands on the and it's just amazing and then he throws in really cool note choices 
where he'll throw the major seven in, almost alluding to harmonic minor. <laughs> the standard little that's another George Lynch trademark then it comes up then it switches to that part he switches and he goes And he throws in that C sharp, which is a lot different than he landed that earlier. So when he goes to the G, and then he'll go, then he'll do a George Lynch trademark where he'll bend that high note and release it, then go into this nice. Just a killer solo, and I love George's playing, and the guy's a phrasing master. I just love that solo by Carlos Cavazzo. I was like a huge Quiet Ride fan back in the day. I remember my brother bought it, and I was a Randy Rhodes fan. I remember he was in the band Quiet Riot, so when my brother bought the album and put it on, it was instantly what I wanted to hear. And I thought Carlos's playing was just really amazing on it for the time. I mean, it's so melodic, and his tone was really cool. And all the solos are really memorable on that album. So that album really had a huge impression on me. And you really can't underestimate the influence that album had on so many players. Um, they were going to play heavy music or different styles. But that was really kind of a gateway album. And it really opened up the whole L.A. scene. So Rat, Motley Crue, and all those kind of followed. But um, that Mental Health album was really special for the time. And that solo, Come On, Fill the Noise, just has some really cool elements to it. And every time I still hear that song on the radio, I crank it up, and I still love that solo. He starts out with this pentatonic run. Just really melodic phrasing, and then that little... You know, there were so many cool elements to the solo. I really like this spot. I always love that part, slow, it's... Just a great solo, um, and very memorable, I still love it. Both those albums I got in 1983, uh, the Breaking the Chains was actually recorded in 1981 and released over in Germany. Um, had some slightly different songs on it. They re-recorded parts of it and released it in America in 1983. And then the Quiet Right Mental Health album, I believe, came out in March of that year, March of 83. And within a couple years, the whole scene exploded. As you can see, this Hip Raider magazine has the West Coast Metal Explosion on the cover, and it's got uh, Nikki Six and Robin Crosby, a rat. I just loved Hip Raider, as I've mentioned in other episodes, and they covered the L.A. scene extensively. Um, and I used to just love it, looking at the pictures in Circus Magazine and Hip Raider of all the cool Charvels and Kramer guitars. It was an amazing time. Around that same period, you had the eternal question of who was better, Judas Priest or Iron Maiden? And that's still one to be answered, I think. I just love looking at the pictures in these magazines, and that's kind of what I did in study halls. I mentioned in another episode. This is a really cool picture of Warren with one of his Charvels. Um, they covered all the L.A. bands, like Armored Saint was in here. Um, the Great White, Wasp, Rough Cut. Um, just cool. There's a cool picture of George. He's got a Strat in the background with the Ingve ad that was in all the magazines back then. Couldn't get enough Ingve. Yeah, they cover some Maiden in, in this issue. Helix. Does anyone remember Helix? I think they were from Canada. Crocus. 
I was really into that Hardware album by Crocus. In fact, the first concert I ever saw, I went to see Crocus. Um, and I thought they were awesome. My second concert was Richie Blackmore's Rainbow and Iron Maiden. So, a little step up there. And then here's some cool uh, Queensryche photos when they released that first EP. That was pretty awesome. Um, yeah, so Hip Parader was the magazine to go to for the L.A. Metal Explosion. Def Leppard was big. You got some Scorpions back then. And here's some more Quiet Riot. They've covered Quiet Riot extensively. So this is probably around the Condition Critical album or the third album, which kind of didn't do as well. By that time, they started to fade. But anyway, yeah, the L.A. scene, the guitar playing, everything, just a huge influence on me. Some of the other amazing L.A. players are Warren Demartini, who I think I made four videos of on my channel here, if you want to check out some more of Warren's playing. Jakey e. Lee, I did one on him. I'm going to cover him more. Um, there was like Craig Goldie was from that scene. I mean, it was just chock full of amazing guitar playing in Los Angeles. You know, Randy Rhodes, I've done some videos on Randy. Can't leave Randy out. But I thought I would cover these three today. I thought it would be fun to cover Eddie, George, and Carlos. So... If you like this, please like and subscribe, and thank you so much for watching. And thanks for hanging out with me, and have fun picking.